Hey guys, I'm Susan, and today, me and Alicia and Ryan Ashley and Katie are all going to be teaching you some pro tips to make it easier for you to make jewelry. So we've been doing this YouTube thing for a while and we've noticed you guys have a lot of questions about tools and supplies and how we put things together. Maybe things that we don't mention during the videos. So we thought we'd put together our very first pro tips. I call them beaters hacks or jewelry making hacks uh, videos so that you guys could maybe see some of the ins and outs, some of the things we do behind the scenes to make it easier for us to make jewelry for you. Um, I'm going to start with a couple and then Ryan Ashley's going to do one and Katie's going to do one and Alicia's going to do one. You guys will love this and I bet you we'll probably make another video like this. So my pro tip today uh, has to do with picking up all the beads that you have all over your bead mat. <laughs> and uh, one, one way you could do it is you could take these beads and say you, you want the one at the very bottom so you just start spilling beads out here. Oh my goodness. Oh, I don't, I don't see enough garnets. I need some more garnets. So you've got all these beads out here on your mat and they're tiny. Okay, well, I guess I'll start picking these back up. You know, you try to scoop them with your hands and get them in and it takes forever, right? You might not know about something called a triangle tray. These little guys are absolutely invaluable for beaters and people working with anything tiny. It could be jump rings, it could be beads, it could be crimp beads, seed beads, anything like that. Picking them up off of these mats and out of your bead boards can be really hard, but watch this. This guy actually, it's kind of fun. You can use them for counting too but you just kind of scoop everything up like this and then pick them up and dump them back in neatly into the container. It even goes into a, like a small tubular like container like your seed bead tubes. Look, all of them are in there, but then I spill them back out again. This is also a great tool. Gosh, I, I don't even know. I love this tool so much. There's so many things I do with it. But if you're wanting to count things, like say you want 100 beads and you're trying to get 100 out of here, you can count them out by fives, like say with five, 10, there's my pile of 10, and then 15, 20, now I've got another pile of 10, 25, 30. See how I've got them in lines right there? I know I have 30 beads right there, 10, 20, 30, because I counted them out with my triangle tray. Is that not the coolest tool ever? Guys, go ahead and get some of these. You will love them. So my next pro tip has to do with wire wrapping. That's not surprising, right? I do love to work, work with wire. It's one of my favorite mediums to work with. And, um, but when you're working with wire and you're trying to get those beads on the wire, it's really hard to get them to sit up straight on your wire. A lot of times you'll bead them on there and it'll kind of lay to one side or lay to the other because you don't have your wire right. So what I'm going to teach you today is how to make a little seat for your bead. So what we're going to do is we're just going to start, and I'm just using a straight piece of wire. Obviously, if you're wiring them onto earrings, it would be round. If you're wiring it onto a ring, it might also be a rounded shape. But just in the, in the uh, interest of making this faster and easier, I'm just going to use a straight piece. And this, when I'm done, could be like a little bar necklace. So I'm going to take some beads, and it doesn't matter what beads you use. I've just got some little round gemstone beads here. And this is a piece of 16 gauge wire. And then I'm going to pull myself a little bit of 26 gauge wire to work with. So first thing you're gonna do is give yourself a little handle with the 26 gauge wire, put your thumb over that and wrap your wire around the 16 gauge wire about three times. Now, here's where, here's where everything gets a little crazy. This is when people start getting kind of confused and make mistakes. They, they put their bead onto their wire. So say I grab this little garnet right here and put it onto my wire, like so. Now, I want it to sit up on my wire. So, but if I just take this bead and put it all the way up against the wire and then pull this down on this side, you can see that one side has no wire and the other side has a lot of wire. So I'm gonna wrap that on there just so you guys can see what it looks like when you don't give it a seat. So it looks, Okay, now I want to put another garnet on here. Actually, let me get you a different color. Let's go with a piece of a lapis, just so it's a little bit different. Pop that onto the wire, like so. Now what you wanna do in order to get it to have an even amount of wire on either side is you wanna give them a little seat. So what I usually do is take my thumbnail and I just press in against the wire and make a little tiny bend and then pull the lapis up against the bend 
and then pull down against the wire. Nice bend, bring it down, and pull it against the wire. So now you see I have a little, a little seat for it. I have a little bit of wire on one side, a little bit of wire on the other side, and so that when I wrap this side, like so, a couple times, it sits up straight on the edge of the wire. Like so. so let me do that for you again. So you're gonna give it just a little, and you can do this with a plier too, like this is an easier way to do it, is grab it with your chain nose. I always use my fingernail, but see what I'm doing is just making a little bend in the wire. That way you might be able to see a little bit better. So that the bead sits up against that bend rather than against the piece of 16 gauge wire. So let's get this in here, let's another garnet here, pop him on to the wire, the 16 or the 26 gauge wire, bring it down and then wrap this on the opposite side, like so. Wrap, wrap, and you can see that. See how they kind of sit up on your wire like that? And that way also it looks really neat because you've got a little piece on one side, a little piece on the other side, and it looks very uniform. If you do it without doing that, then it's not gonna look as uniform because you might have some wire on one side on one bead and on the other side on the other bead. So that's my pro tip. Hey guys, I'm Alicia and here is my pro tip. I don't know about you guys, but I work with wire all the time and I get so frustrated when you are like putting beads on your wire and you can't get past a kink in your wire, kind of like life. So this nylon plier is the best tool ever, like hands down, if you don't have this tool, this is one tool that I think every jeweler or jewelry maker should have in their life because watch this you have wire and you're like oh my gosh I'm gonna cut that off and throw it away well you're wasting a lot of money first of all that that you're just throwing away so if you have this tool watch this it's like magic look at that straightens your wire and that would be this much wire that you just threw away and think about if you did that every time you made jewelry you would be losing money if you're buying to sell. You're losing that much money every single time just because your wire gets knotted up. And say, oh, you're working on something and like maybe your cat jumped on your table and played with your wire and you're like, ugh. Just take your nylon plier, woo, and look, it's perfectly straight again. So that's my pro tip. If you wanna take it, you can or you can leave it, but this is the best tool ever. You definitely should pick up a nylon plier. Hey everyone, I'm Ryan Ashley and I'm excited to bring you my pro tip using tape. If you like to work with tiny beads and needles, you're gonna need this. I just pull out a little bit of a length and I, you can cut it off or you can tear it off like me. There you go. And then I just wrap it inside out, sticky side up around my index finger, just like this. Being careful not to stick it all over everything else. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm wrapping it around, sticky side out. This is great in a pinch. And then when I'm doing, whoops, when I'm doing my beadwork, all I have to do is put some beads on my tape. And then I can easily, as I'm stitching, just pick them up as I go with my needle without having to reach super far onto my surface. I love this because if you're working with a lot of different colors of beads or you're just, you've got a long project, it can be really tedious to kind of go back and forth, and this really saves a lot of time and helps you work speedily and easily. Hey guys, I'm Katie. This six step bail shaping plier changed my life, and I wanna tell you why. If you make jewelry, then you make a lot of loops. And there are two basic kinds, open and closed. Open loops are just wire loops that don't have the coil to close them up. And you can see that on these little earrings here. Up at the top are little open loops. And I love making these because it saves time. It's just, you can change out your jewelry, you change your design. Um, and it's just simple, it simplifies your look. But the way that I was making them a long time ago caused a lot of frustration because I wouldn't be able to make the perfect loop the first try. What I was going for was that. 
a perfect loop, easy every time. But before this tool, I would make a little bend and then trim off the amount that I thought was gonna be the perfect length to complete that circle. And then grab my round nose pliers and fidget with it, fuss with it. I mean, I was just like, I mean, that's not bad, but I still, it's just, if you're trying to make a pair of earrings, you want them to be perfectly symmetrical, just like these over here. So let me show you this little trick I taught that works with this specific bail plier that you can find on JTV. Something about it is just perfect math and it's kind of amazing. If you've never used one of these before, it's basically a tool that has one, two, three, four, five, six little mandrels on it. But there's also a secret plier inside of this flat part, which is a measuring device. And you can use it to make the perfect loop every time. So with, this is 22 gauge wire again. I'm just gonna cut that loop I just did off. Stick your wire in the flat part of the tool just so it barely sticks out the side and make a sharp right angle. And that's the perfect measurement for the smallest bail on your plier. So once you make that bend, grab the very end of that wire with, and then with the smallest bail on top of it, you'll roll it back. And it's gonna give you a perfect loop every time. And I always like to squeeze it in the flat part to make it all lay flat. And then sometimes if I have a little wonk in my wire right there, I'll squeeze that with the flat part too to make it straight. So this is not only a bail shaping plier, but it's also a flat nose plier. It's also a measuring device, and it's just a great tool that I, I love. That's my pro tip. Thanks so much for watching. Let us know what other jewelry hacks you'd like to know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell, and we'll see you guys again next time.